Come on, come with me, you mighty man of God. Come with it's me, mighty man of God. Come you be here, yeah, come. Come temple, but for now, I need y'all at the gate. And, and, take and you have to set love. praise at the gate in your life sometimes. To just get up and almost, if you even have to fake it, fake it. If you have to fake it, fake it. Sometimes driving to church, it's real early when I get here and I won't feel my sermon, but I'll just start driving down the road like I do. I'm thinking about my sermon. I'm not feeling it. I'll just start going, whoo, whoo, whoo. And my car's not self-driving, so I'm taking my hands off the wheel every time I clap. So I got to be careful, start slapping my leg or something. But I have to put the, the Levites or the praise at the gate. Because I can't get here and wait to see how y'all feel to see how I'm going to preach and do my job. So I got to put praise at the gate. You see yes. what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. But these, these guys weren't, weren't Levites. These were guards. And he didn't just put them at the gate. He gave instructions. Look at verse 2. So powerful. Never saw Nehemiah 7 before. I put Han Hananiah and Hananiah, because you had integrity and feared God. Verse 3 says, I told them the gates are not to be opened until the sun is high. That's unorthodox because you're supposed to open the gates when the sun comes up. He said, we're under attack right now. So I need you to keep the gates shut until we have full light and until everybody is wide awake because I know where we're vulnerable. And I can't just open the gates right now because the enemies are threatened because we're making progress. Hear me, your enemy is threatened because you're making progress. He's threatened. Amen. That's what the attack is about. Amen. That's what it's been about. Oh, the devil's just picking on me. No, he's not just picking on you. He has actually studied you. He is more aware of you than you are aware of you. Your proclivities, your patterns, your past. He knows all of that because he is after your purpose. If the wall isn't built, he doesn't come to wage war. That's what it's been about. Listen to me. That's what this is about. That's what the attack is about. So Nehemiah is like, okay. This is an unusual time. We're going to do an unusual thing. Keep these gates shut until the sun is hot, until it's hot. Basically saying until noon, keep the gates shut. Keep them shut a little while longer. So let me ask you something. In this season of your life where you've been struggling with depression, some of you have been having panic attacks, some of you have been having waves of anxiety. I mean, who doesn't? Some of you have been having suicidal thoughts. Some of you not suicidal, but it's just like hard to explain. It's like a low flying, low grade sense that you can't get any victory and sustain it. So I want to tell you something you can do. Keep the doors shut while it's dark. Keep the doors shut while it's dark. Put a time frame on it. I don't care. Seven days. I'm not looking at anything on social media till I read a scripture. Amen. All the applause just talk. You act like I told y'all to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to the whole. You act like I told you to die on the cross. I'm not talking about a crown of thorns. I'm talking about keeping the gates shut mm -hmm. until you have light. That's why you got to start your day with God. Mm -hmm. That's your door. I don't care. Right, How many of y'all wake up at crazy times of the night thinking crazy thoughts? Put a sermon on your phone and put it in your ear till you go back to sleep. Keep the doors closed in the dark. Mm -hmm. That's not the time for you to be alone. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to. I will preach to you. I will do pillow talk with you. <laughs> through the phone, through the phone, through the app, on YouTube. I'll talk you through it. Or another preacher that you like better who doesn't scream so much. That's good. That's good. But keep the doors shut mm -hmm. when it's dark. You need light to fight the enemy. Mm -hmm. Holly, you hear me down there, baby? I'm telling them it's the door. Your thoughts are the door. Your eyes are the door. Your ears are the door. 
dude, I do not just let anybody talk to me about anything. I don't rebuke them, but I pivot. People always want to come up to me and talk about other churches and other ministers and how this person fell and that and the other. And I'm like, hold up, man. Look at Nehemiah 7, 3. This is me. He said, put some of them on the post. Look at the end of the verse. And some near their own houses. That's my verse. That's my verse. I got to guard my own house. I got to guard my own heart. I'm not letting that door come in. You know, the door to feeling really horrible about yourself is through judging others. Because now you're going to become a victim of your own judgments. Can y'all handle a little bit more? I mean, here's the door. If you got to go, if you just got to go, you got to go through Hananiah and Hananiah, but you... I think we should put some real bodyguards at the doors for people who leave in the invitation of my sermon. I mean, some real bodyguards who are barely saved. (laughs) Leave during my invitation. But think about this door. And this may not be the best door to do it, but I'll ask you a question. Is this door closed? Is it open? And I, he said, it's cracked and cracked isn't closed. Cracked isn't closed Mm-mm. for the season you're in right now. Yeah. Look, I'm not telling you go home and only watch Disney movies. That's not what I'm preaching about today. But I'm saying for some of the attacks you've been under, the ones that really matter because they concern your purpose. He said, make sure not only that they don't open the doors, until it's noon so we can fight in the light not in the darkness because the enemy wants to fight you in the darkness he wants to fight you alone he wants to fight you in ignorance he wants to fight you in despair but look at verse three it also says before the guards go off duty okay fellas before you go off duty have them shut the doors and bar them and to bar them means put your hand on it and make sure it's shut make sure it's shut God is going to put some of you in a season of shut up. Mm. I probably shouldn't say that, but I was reading Joshua 6, 1, when they went in the walls of Jericho and look what Joshua 6, 1 said in the King James English. Now the city of Jericho was straightly, Shut up. Come on, pastor. That's not what it means. It means that nobody was coming and going. I know. But look at verse 10, what Joshua told them to do while they marched around those walls. Joshua commanded the people saying, you shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall you shout. Because I'm concerned. If you just say what you feel in this season. You are going to speak yourself right into Satan's attack. I'm in a season of shut up because what God has for me is too great, right? He brought me to Jericho. This is the first city of the promised land. And God said, I need you to just take a sabbatical right now from other people's opinions. That's your door. You can't stop them from posting. You can't stop them from talking. You can't stop them from hating. You can't stop them from disliking. You can't stop them from being idiots. But it's your door that lets their voice in. Even if they talk around you, it doesn't have to get in you. Come on. You know, I'm preaching the truth. This is why you're quiet. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Don't shout. Just, Just everybody close your door. You know how many times I had to do this this week while the Holy Spirit was giving me this message? I mean, I start to complain and I'm just letting it out, right? No, you're letting it in. Because your words have power and you keep describing the same problem. These stupid walls of Jericho, all this stupid situation, all this inflation, all these gas prices. 
That's a good icebreaker for like three weeks. But come on, is that all we're ever going to talk to each other about is what's wrong? Maybe God wants to put you in a season of shut up so he can bring you into a season of shouting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. It's not the devil defeating you. He doesn't have any power over you that you don't give him. Not with Jesus inside of you. Mm. So we've got to get serious about our joy. We've got to get serious about our peace. We've got to get serious about our mind. We've got to get ser- serious about our sanity. We've got to get serious about our mental health. Yes. We've got to get serious about all this stuff. And God is bringing a prophet to you today. Like Holly said to me, what would you do with it? Even if God gave it to you. If God gave you peace... Would you protect it? If God gave you a relationship, would you defend it? How is the city of your soul? I'm walking around today just wondering, how's it going in there? You got those doors up yet? I want to see you next week, next week. I'll probably be here next week. How about you? And I just want to be like, where did you close the door this week? And just go like, you know what, man? You don't even have to offend anybody. You do not need to go up to people this week. It's love week for crying out loud. Don't go up to people like, no, sorry. I'm in a season to shut up. You shut up. and I can't talk to you anymore. You're toxic. But I'm saying, are we praying for God to deliver us from devils that he has given us the power to defend ourselves from? Mm-hmm. It's your Yes, yes, yes. And I wonder if I was as concerned about what's getting in and coming out. Mm. Would I be having to pray to God about half the stuff I'm praying to him about? Mm. Stand up, I'm done. Clap those hands. Give God praise. Amen. Was that good teaching today? Amen. Did you receive something? Huh? Elevation on, church. To you, give him a praise. Don't praise Shout me. If he brought you a word, that was him, not me. Elevation church. Amen. All right. So I want us to get I want us to get better about one thing in this church. I think this is the most amazing church in the world. I love being your pastor. One thing I want y'all to stop doing so much is running like right when I get ready to dismiss, like it's over. If the sermon doesn't even make it out this door, it is not going to give you victory in your life this week. So every location, just stop where you are. Just stand up for a minute. Let me pray with you. Let me pray that what you heard today, because the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. I could see it in some of your eyes. You look like a deer in the headlights of the word of God. (laughs) Like Amen. you're looking at your spouse. Did you talk to Pastor Stephen this week and tell him what I was doing? Get a restraining order on this preacher. I think he's been sneaking around my house. I think he's got some cameras up. <laughs> That's my new goal. I want to preach so full of the Holy Spirit that you put a restraining order on me because you think I'm stalking you during the week. <laughs> but how cool will it be that you will have a reminder of this sermon? Even when you leave today, you go through a door and then through another door and then you get in a car, I guess. I don't think you're getting on a camel. This isn't Jerusalem. This is the city of your soul. And every door that you open and every door that you close, I want you to begin to think about how you're defending what God gave you. I want you to do for the city of your soul what Nehemiah did for the city of Jerusalem. He said, I put the doors in place and I gave orders. I didn't just assume we're going to be okay because God is with us. I put the doors in place and I said, you can open them then. You can't open them now. Y'all, even in my daily disciplines, I am so unfocused. I am so unfocused. When I go to do a physical workout, I can't take my phone in the room to do a workout. I know myself. I have to put my phone in another room. And did y'all know the new iPhone has an off button? Anyway, that's a special feature. 
I'll show you how to use it sometime. It's amazing. And then a lot of times, watch, when I shut that off and just do my workout and focus, the Lord will give me my sermon because I closed the door. He'll just give it to me. He'll just give it to me. But you got to close the door. What did Jesus say? When you pray, Matthew 6, 6, go in and close the door. Yes. You can't pray and ask God to defend you from the devil for stuff that you left the door wide open to. He'll help you. He'll give you grace. But don't you want victory too? Yes. I want victory and grace. I do. And so one way we let God in, we just lift our hands. So do that right now. That's not a charismatic thing. Stop it. People do that. People do that at football games when they're excited. People do it in a war when they surrender. So you could throw your hands up. And I love what Revelation 3.20 said that Jesus was speaking to the church. And he said, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and open it, I'll come in and eat with you. You've been sitting at the wrong table all week. You've been sitting, feasting on the wrong thoughts, worrying about the wrong stuff. For some of us, it's obsessively checking our bank balance. Yeah. It doesn't always come through something that's so evil. But once we open that door, the devil just has his way. But not today, Lord. Today we hear your voice and we hear your knock and we're opening the door to you. Come, Lord Jesus into every heart that's open to you. Some hearts are hardened, but a lot of these hearts today, Lord, they're really serious. They're sincere. They want your presence. So come, Lord. Just say it if you mean it. Say, come, Lord. He will hear that invitation. He'll respond to that invitation. Say it again. Say, come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. The door of our hearts are open to you. We invite your presence, your peace, your joy, your wisdom. Show us this week where we need to put our hand on the door and make sure it's shut. Conversations we need to have. Conversations we need to discontinue. We want to be right with you. We want to be in a peaceful place. I bless you and I thank you for the privilege of sharing your word today. I thank you that it won't return void. It will accomplish that which you sent it to do. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching the Elevation Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the EFAM, our online extended family, and join us live every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream, and share this with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give Now button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. God bless you. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream, and share this with it's your girl, Miss Bree, sharing Elevation Church with you. We're going to take this across the globe. Jesus Christ is Lord. Deuces.